Are you some kind of psychopath? <laughs> Hey there, I'm a psychopath. That means that I have a mutual understanding with everyone around me that they are expendable at any given moment. It also means I like things like Fallout 76. Just because I'm a psychopath doesn't mean I have to look the part. I could be a sexy looking psychopath. That is a thing. Then I'm definitely not. I'm not that. I also have a name. It's not pronounceable. I was selected to do something like save the world, but I think I'm just gonna kill everyone instead. So this will be my legacy. And of course, on my psychopathic journey, we start this off by murdering someone. And as I made my way down towards my new life, I came across an inferior being. He babbled on like an idiot for what felt like hours. Rightly so, I called him an idiot and demanded his gun. Yeah, you sound a lot like my lieutenant. Here, hope this gun serves you better than it did me. And thus, began my true adventure. I then killed some animals that were scavenging around. And I made my way to a lady who seemed easy enough to fool, even though I was a complete stranger to her. After I convinced her to get out there and fight the good fight against evil, I did what came naturally to me. I proceeded to tell the ship I murdered her captain and it was funny. I understand. When I left the ship, some Dorcas was stalking me. I tried to talk to him, but- I'll be with you, friend. I just I'm couldn't. Hurting. The universe told me what I did was wrong, but since it's all I've ever known, I accepted the terms and conditions. All of a sudden, I found myself in an elevator jamming out to some sick dubstep playlist. I then met with a fat-faced, probably whack job of a mayor who promised me wealth. Some sort of lady named after a cheese begged me to join my crew. I didn't know I had a crew, but I did know that I needed food for later, so I accepted. Hey, ma'am. She wanted to speak to me. I said, shut up. I finally found the lady that the mayor had told me about. I said I was going to ruin all of their lives. I then set out to do just that. Sadly, nothing is easy in life, so I had to run around this stupid power plant and pull this dumb lever just to absolutely destroy an entire community, forcing them to starve and freeze. Get away! I heard a voice call out from the basement of the power plant. He You're was convinced real. I wasn't real. real. Get away from me, phantom! So I showed him how real I was. When I returned to the village I had just destroyed, the humans were gathered around a fire like savages. I went and spoke to that lady again, who was clearly upset at my actions. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. So, feeling pity, I put her out of her misery, along with every single other member of the town. Fun fact, did you know that some cats are actually allergic to humans? It's quite fascinating, really. After my work was done, I returned to the mayor's home, had an awkward elevator ride with the cheese lady, murdered the mayor and his guards, but my assistant decided to question me. You just killed him. Luckily, I always have the right answers. Are you some kind of psychopath? Yes, I then needed to prove to the cheese lady that I, indeed, was what she accused me so unfairly of. Luckily, the town was full of example, so I eagerly rushed around town, whistling a fun tune, helping her understand what she had signed up for. Also, I do not kill animals. That would be ridiculous. At last, she finally seemed to be on the same page. I think you did the rightest thing you could. A lot of people would have suffered otherwise. After a job well done, I went back to my ship, which cheese lady seemed surprised I owned. Is this your ship? What a new. I installed the bloody power core, redeemed the items from the obsidian skull that somehow transfers rare items off of the important people I've murdered right into my ship. I then set a course for a heavily populated yet horrifically condensed and claustrophobic spaceship. Destination reached. The groundbreaker. There, I met the locals and was able to get through customs by threatening to literally strangle their bored bureaucrat. What a time to be alive. I met this old lady who offered me money for partaking in morally compromising missions. I believe she was asking me if I was capable of carrying out such a task. So once again, example. I killed everyone in her office. Fun fact, did you know that competitive art used to be an Olympic sport? I then made my leave of absence, believing I had made my point. The guards understood. I explained to my ship that the old lady was dead. Captain is a psychopath. And set course for the most dangerous landing pad on a nearby planet. So I fought my way through the planet's wildlife. Regardless of who attacked first, it didn't matter to me. Eventually, I found myself at a home. I walked inside to find that there was a family living here. 
I changed that status to lived here. They were quite aggressive for just a run-of-the-mill family. Their daughter was the only non-aggressive oh, one. Hi. She asked for candy. Did you come to bring us more of those rocket candies? That was real nice of her. Inviting us to dinner like that. I didn't have any. So, embarrassed, I commanded this guy to drop candy. Turns out, this family was a bunch of cannibals. I did the right thing. I finally arrived at the big city where I met their overlord, well. and a drunk red-haired lady who demanded drugs. Who was I to not oblige? I immediately robbed the nearest pharmacy, got the drugs, and she seemed so happy that she wanted to help me murder everyone in the solar system. <laughs> and then I beat up, and by beat up, I mean straight up slaughtered everyone on my way to, well, who knows where. I ended up in a village of pamphlet-giving freaks. I headed into their bar to meet with their leader. As he spoke gibberish and nothing of importance to me, I scanned him for weaknesses for my eventual return to the town. I moved on to the task at hand, total human annihilation, and murdered my way up to a mountain through giant bugs, humans, and other just inferior beings in general. I entered a secret facility, of course killed everyone inside, and met a nerd who told me to get the other factions to stop broadcasting on a radio. I said I would do it because I know that I'm good at stopping people from doing things, like living. I looted everything he owned as my next visit would be a quick one. I then found myself in a small town guarded by what I can only assume to be some sort of security. That's my nice way of telling you to sod off. With that being said, I tested the town's security. And then I found a lady trapped in a room. I told her that I knew some dude with terrible sideburns and she happily opened the door for me. Finally, I'm not risking my neck anymore. Well, she was wrong about that. Score one for Felix. Once again, I was winning. Then, you wouldn't believe this, I found another trapped civilian. Well, this one babbled on about being chased in there by some monsters. Luckily, I wasn't one of those monsters she spoke of, mostly because she had absolutely no idea who I was. I educated her. My time to shine. I found a wandering merchant, more than likely carrying valuable goods, so I did the logical thing. I sold him all of my garbage, and then kicked him off a bridge. There was also a man in a nearby cave. Was being the key word. At this point, I had successfully destroyed everyone associated with the terrible sideburns man and could now talk to him properly. Mioka. He seemed to know the red-haired lady, so I made sure that she got the first hit. Watch this! After that, it was an all-out bloodbath. I'm still not quite sure what all of these people were doing here. All I knew was this fun fact. Did you know that apparently dolphins have names for each other? Absolutely mind-blowing, I know. I can just imagine a dolphin calling out, Hey, Philip! Check out my new sick tattoo of a 2020 Corvette Stinger with an LT2 V8 engine and GT2 Napa leather seats. And then Philip, the other dolphin, would respond with something along the lines of, Oh, Josiah, why are you always spending your money so frivolously? Did I not warn you about the raise in government taxes? You simply cannot write off a tattoo as a business purchase just because it quote unquote defines you as a Twitch streamer. So anyways, I murdered the entire town leaving absolutely no survivors. After that, I headed back to the nerdy blue shirt geek boy. He told me to pull a lever outside for some reason, so I did, followed by me returning to him, eating 10,000 calories on the spot, and beheaded him with a mace with literal spinning saw blades on it. He died. Anyways, I got drunk and then found myself fighting in the middle of a war. Not knowing whose side I was on, I just killed everyone in sight. What felt like only moments later, I was on an elevator with Cheese Lady and Red Haired Woman. We walked into a room with a very, very ugly man, if I do say so myself, who questioned us. And just what do you figure you're doing up here? Not knowing the right answer to his question, we killed him to avoid confusion. I met another lady, so I killed her, and then I moved on to finish off the town. Not a soul was spared in the massacre, but here's another fun fact. Did you know that apparently horses have the largest eyes out of any animal? It's about two inches in diameter and is in a placement that gives them nearly a 360 degree view of their surroundings. Well anyways, everyone was dead so I moved on. I returned to the head honcho of whatever this town's name was to collect my reward. You're back. 
and in one piece. <laughs> I then showed him what two pieces of a human look like instead of one. Realizing I had just killed the mayor of this town, there was no reason for this town to have anyone in it. That, my friends, is justification for my actions. I proceeded to end this town because it had nothing thinking? more to offer me. Fun fact, did you know that bananas are curved because they grow towards the sun? That's right, they go through a process called negative geotropism. Well, that settled that, and once again I was off and finding new adventures. In my finding new adventures, I met people that would give me rewards before I ended them. This man, little did he know it, was in a staring contest with me, and bowed in submission. The townsfolks grew angry at my decision, so I eagerly ran around ending each and every person that wouldn't benefit me in any way. Which was everyone, of course. Except this chicken. Chickens will one day rule the galaxy. I met another trapped person. This one had red hair. I felt threatened, like they were going to want to speak to my manager. Luckily, my manager is me, and me said die. And die, they did do. And then I met this guy. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was, readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Then I found a secret hidden asteroid base with this idiot to greet me. Hey, nice form. I went straight to their captain, but he was rude, so I... <laughs> Out of your mind? For some reason, the dropkick boy was mad about what I had done. You just killed the guy. Maybe since he was my childhood friend? But I wasn't mad, so it really didn't matter. Next, I found myself in some spoiled rich kid land where apparently I needed to meet up with an Do informant. Mind. I'm needing something. Thing is, the only person that tells me things is me. And the guards agreed with my actions, so it was all okay. Eventually, I got contacted by a movie producer who wanted me to film a movie. Natural magnetism, know what I mean? Just go in there and do what feels natural. So I did just that. And then he told me... I knew you had chops, but that was something else. You found the energy in the scene and ran with it. That was visceral. So to further impress him, I killed him too. The elevator ride was fun. I then located the board's leader's home, so I snuck in, murdered all of the guards, and met him for the very first time. How did you get in here? Cycle back to industrial stain. His body gave me a key to the big building downtown. As to which I destroyed everyone inside the main lobby, got to ride a fun elevator, shot the chief or something rather between the eyes, and killed all the guards. After that kerfuffle, I went back to the groundbreaker to finish any unfinished business. People were not happy to see me, so, frustrated at their intolerance to my decision-making skills, I killed every single person on the groundbreaker with extreme prejudice. And what's more, here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that the average Velociraptor was just slightly bigger than a chicken? That's pretty crazy. Also, everyone on the groundbreaker was now dead. All of a sudden, I was back on the orange planet, somehow saving this woman from a bunch of, I suppose, bad guys. Thanks for the help. Next time you need supplies, stop by, you hear? She runs a shop somewhere, which is good to know. Then I found myself randomly talking to some bigwig lady who thought I was so cool. She would die later for sure, but her compliment saved her for the moment. Not her guards, though. They're definitely all dead. I traveled to Hope, killed everyone in sight, even though they were supposed to help me, and found myself a dilemma. Not everyone was dead yet, so I turned around to wrap up any loose ends. And that's exactly what I did. One of my companions actually had parents in town. We did go over there to have a civil conversation, but... They were very we nice. Certainly didn't expect to see you like this. It made it a lot easier to destroy them. <laughs> what in the void did you do? I didn't like how things went down either, but did you have to go and kill them? For some reason, the aggressive ginger cowgirl was upset with me. That wasn't a problem before it meant killing my folks in their own home. So she left. It's really her loss. I forgot there was one human left in the electric city, so I made sure to quickly talk with her. She asked teach me, me to ways. teach me her ways. So once again, I educated her. I saved some dude from being killed by a big monster, so he invited me to his top secret base filled with riches. Hey, Mana Queen Slayer, I reckon you'll find something you like. I took everything, and then I took everything. I finally found the store of the lady I saved, sold all of my garbage to her, and then put her out of business. Now I paid one last visit to the big city, made sure that the civilians here weren't trying to rebuild or anything, and cleaned up the town good and proper this time. 
Some people were mad. What do you think you're doing? But only probably because they were confused. At last, I made it to my final destination, where I killed a bunch of guards, convinced some lady engineer to hand over the password to her computer so I could literally release poison gas into the building. But it didn't reach the room she was in, so I had to end her myself. We simply waltzed through the facility, murdering everyone in our path until we arrived at the president's room. It was the first time I had ever spoken to him. Well, look who it But I was already sick of him talking. Then we beat the tar out of some robot security thing and finally arrived at the second last remaining human in the galaxy, evil but popular blue shirt lady. It was a short conversation. And then I tried to kill the scientist, but I couldn't. I had failed. I had ended every single person in the galaxy, and I couldn't end one measly scientist. I could hardly call myself a psychopath. I was just as peaceful as everyone else. I could use your help. You're the only ally I've got. And not just because you've murdered every potential leader in Halcyon. And I said, nope! The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. The people of Stellar Bay and Amber Heights were slowly but inevitably picked apart by the wildlife of Monarch. In time, the Sublight family was forgotten. As for Edgewater's former workers, their remains provided a source of nourishment for the region's fauna. The loss of Junlei Tennyson hit the groundbreaker hard and even threatened to undercut the ship's independence. After you killed her parents, Ellie left the Unreliable. She found herself taking bigger and more foolish risks. After Junlei's murder, Parvati turned inward. She never quite came out of her shell, and she often wished aloud that her dad was still alive. As hard as she tried to drink them away, Nyoka's memories eventually overcame her. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. Hey, a happy ending after all.